Hello and welcome to SBK Edge Rush Extra. I'm Nat Coombs. He is Crystal Tom Collins. Thank God we've got rid of Propo saucy Tom Collins <laughs> moniker that it was frankly ridiculous from day one. But the fans have voted that is gone. You are locked and loaded as Crystal Tom. I love to see it. And also, this is the first time I think you've forgotten to say, never forget the extra. Oh, you see, I was just, just keeping you on your toes there. Crystal <laughs> Tom, keeping you on your toes. I'll drop it. I'll weave it in at some point during the rest of the rest of the, the rest of the show. Easy for me to say the rest of the show. Wow. Here we are. Three games left. I'm feeling maudlin. Crystal Tom, quite frankly, maudlin. I know. It's a, it's a sad time of the year. I know this is where people start to get hyped and really buzzing towards the Super Bowl. People who maybe haven't even been watching the NFL all season will start chiming in and, and wanting to see these four teams in action going ahead to the big uh, day in a couple of weeks' time on Sunday. But for us NFL fans, it's a sad occasion, isn't it? Our teams aren't in the playoffs anymore. They're done for the year. Have to wait till August, September time for more action. But look, let's stay positive. Let's look ahead to these two games. Hope you find a couple of winners along the way as well. Yeah, you're right. It is uh, right to stay positive because they're two terrific games. So hard to call and the market's reflecting that as well. Uh, as tight as they come for all kinds of different reasons. Incidentally, I said three games. Can't forget the Pro Bowl as well. My bad. Three and a half. <laughs> yeah. Before the end of the season. Let's start Eagles 49ers, the NFC Championship for a place in the Super Bowl. Wow. Okay. The Eagles, the pace setters all season long, formidable defense. One of the legendary returns in terms of sacks by this incredible front. They've got a hardcore secondary. Jalen Hurts has become, I think, the most developed player I can remember. Josh Allen is probably a parallel there in just terms of how significant an improvement we've seen in his quarterback play. We started this season, Tom with questions about whether Hertz would finish this season, right? Whether he was a, an NFL starter at all. Now he's automatically bolted into, well, the top, to, onto the top table. I think it's fair to say, okay, maybe he isn't quite at the Mahomes, Allen and Burrow level, but he's in the top eight, top 10 in the NFL, no doubt about it. Not just based on this season, but going forwards, that's where he's going to be perceived. Yeah, he's played brilliantly all year. As you touched on there, we weren't even sure that he was going to be a starter at this point of the season when we ended last year. Carson Wentz was still at Philly and there was plenty of questions as to whether Jalen Hurts had what it takes to be a franchise QB. I mean, back in his collegiate days, Alabama gave up on him. Right. Now, I know that was because Tua Tungabailoa was in the fold as well and they wanted to give him the start, which is perfectly reasonable given what he's done from Miami injuries aside. But Jalen Hurts has clearly developed into one of the best QBs in the league. He's been excellent all year and even came back from injury last week to perform phenomenally well, albeit against a real bad Giants uh, performance. Now he takes on the 49ers. It'll be an interesting matchup because it's the best defense against Jalen Hurts. So people will have their doubts still about Hurts, but I'm sure he'll want to prove them wrong. Mm, let's talk about how he's going to marshal this offense against, as you say, this terrific 49ers D. Longer throws is, is a key here. Deep throws a key. Because first, he's got AJ Brown and Devontae Smith in terms of deep tandems, arguably the best in the business with respect, of course. Because I'm, I'm thinking Waddle and Hill, of course, as well. But a lot of the time, they'll, you'll take an eight-yard slant and then run 74 yards if you're Jalen uh, Waddle or Tyreek Hill. Mm. This is a classical, old-school deep threat. And he's got a big arm on him as well. Our friend Greg Rosenthal, friend of the show, of course, uh, NFL Network around the NFL legend, Put it perfectly in his column when he said on a, for NFL.com this week, Hertz throws a beautiful deep ball, and he does. We think of him uh, as he's a dual threat quarterback, uh, particularly as how prolific he can be with his legs. Underestimated just how big an arm he's got. Philly, second in the NFL, passes of 20 yards or more. They're tied first for passes of 40 yards or more. That is going to be a key part of their game plan, you would think, even though they've got all this prowess on the ground. I think they're going to take some deep shots early on. Yeah, I think they have to to win this game because the strength of this 49ers defence is not just the D-line, obviously with Bosa rushing the QB every time, but it's also the linebackers and the safety, Talano Hufunga. The mm. middle of the field tends to be the area where the 49ers dominate. Maybe he goes out wide, targets a couple of the receivers, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith on some go routes or even some out routes um, because that kind of section of the field tends to be a little bit uh, porous compared to the middle of the field when you tackle the 49ers. If you have a gut, I mean, it's, it's fantastic having the arm, right, to throw a deep ball. But you need wide receivers who will go and get that ball. The likes of Devontae Adams, we've seen for the Raiders this year. He made a phenomenal catch. I can't remember who it was against. But he came back and got that ball when it looked like he was never, never had a chance. You have other players. 
And this is no slight on Gabe Davis because I think he's exceptional. And he's got great hands, but he doesn't come back to the ball. And that can haunt Josh Allen. It looks like Josh Allen's uh, putting out a bad throw for Buffalo. Mm. Devontae Smith, I think, is one of the top three at going out and getting that ball. He's not the biggest guy, but he will always be there when the ball is there. He mm. will get his hands right in the ideal position. So mm. it helps Jalen Hurts massively if you want to target these receivers on long go routes. And I think they probably will target these corners because they're going to have to. They're going to, uh, 49 is going to stop the run. So you're going to have to go deep, make the linebackers, make the safeties play deep so you can open up that box a little bit for Miles Sanders, Jalen Hurts, even with his own legs. Kenneth Gainwell as well, if he wants to perform, which he, ha- he didn't do during the regular season for my fantasy team, I have to admit. But last week, he was phenomenal. I think that's probably connected. I think the reason you had drafted him in your fantasy team is ex- precisely <laughs> why you didn't see the return that you wanted. Okay, so uh, you mentioned uh, the Alabama situation for Jalen Hurts. It's an interesting point because... It wasn't just being marginalized. It wasn't the fact that they moved on from him in isolation. It was the fact that they chose the national championship game to do it, right? Hertz benched at halftime. Tua comes in. The rest is history. Hertz goes to Oklahoma, rebuilds his career. Here he is now. Mental strength, I think it's fair to say, he is going to be absolutely front and center and not be phased by this occasion, even though it is a big, big game. There is this concern about Brock Purdy bringing us to the 49ers. Now, Purdy, by all accounts, has shown next to no emotion whatsoever, <laughs> apart from that, uh, as Propo was talking about on SBK Edrush, that uh, that chess-beating Donkey Kong spin a bit earlier, <laughs> earlier on in the playoffs. But he is a completely dispassionate, very, very cool hand loop, which is one of the reasons why he has been so effective in this extraordinary understudy performance this is exceptional that the 49ers are here they shouldn't be here yet we know a starter goes down you can still make hay with a backup the the eagles were a few years ago of course with the aforementioned nick Foles, is a good example of that this is their third string quarterback seventh round draft pick we had to really drill deep and check in with our college days college expert ben isaacs to get any kind of mo on him when he first emerged no one knew who the hell this guy was really and yet he's come in Hasn't been asked by Shanahan to do a huge amount in terms of winning a game, putting the game on his shoulders, but as is often the way with a backup and certainly a young backup, don't lose the game. Don't throw the game away. Protect the ball. Be smart with it. Just three interceptions, no fumbles on 229 attempts since December the 4th. Purdy has been compact, organized together. And that's very much why they've got here because he all these weapons around him Shanahan of course his father one of the great run uh, offensive minds in terms of the ground game and the running game he's taken that to the next level with McCaffrey in the mix the way he uses Debo so many weapons around him a great offensive line around him so just keep it simple Brock now you probably guess where I'm getting at here NFC championship game he's never faced anything like this in his life and more than that do you think he's going to need to bring more than that in this game he's gonna need or rather the eagles are gonna force brock to win the game for the 49ers put it on his shoulders and if they do is he capable of delivering it's a great question because i've loved brock purdy i think he's come it comes into this game as probably the best story of the nfl so far this year um it's just phenomenal how close they've even got to winning the super bowl as you've already touched on this isn't just a backup QB. They had the best or arguably the best backup QB in the business in Jimmy Garoppolo. They weren't even planning on getting involved in a third string QB this season. It was Trey Lance all the way. If he picked up an injury, Jimmy Garoppolo, that would be the season done. But no, Rock Purdy steps up to the plate. Everyone doubted him. He's proven everyone wrong. He's been great across the last 12 games. They've won all 12 of them. They boast the best defense in the league, which does help Rock Purdy. But yes, I think he's going to be forced to make a couple of big plays but who are we to doubt Brock Purdy? Like, I think this guy has what it takes. He's going to find George Kittle down the seam. He does every single game. Why is the fact that this is now the final four, the conference championship, going to deter Brock Purdy from making those throws? Okay, the Philadelphia Eagles have one of the best defenses in the league, the second best actually behind the 49ers in terms of yardage allowed. But I don't see Brock Purdy throwing too many interceptions, let alone, well, I don't see him throwing one interception, I have Mm. to admit. I think it's going to be dink and dive. I think Debo Samuel is going to be involved. Brandon Ayuk on the slants, crucial to their game plan. George Kittle down the seam. And Philadelphia, as good as they are on defense, 
they're not the best at stopping a run. And we know this 49ers offense is arguably the best uh, at running the ball. We've got Christy McCaffrey, you've got Elijah Mitchell. You can go to a third string RB as well and Jordan Mason, mm. and he's sure to uh, gain yardage on the ground. So uh, I, on that, I have to take Tom, the point. Go I, I want to come in on that because this is, we're hearing this a lot and it makes sense. It, it, two great defenses, as you rightly said, the top two in most statistical categories in the NFL. One of the obvious omissions there is, is is the Philly run D, which is ranked 21st, but it is fast improving because it was dead last or thereabouts for the first third half of the season. And they added a lot of players, Linval Joseph, they added Robert Quinn and Dominic and Sue in the mix as well. They, they, they strengthened up, they added depth, muscle, broad in the middle there, and they've definitely got a lot better at it. So I agree that they're by no means best in show. I'm not convinced that it is as much of a weak link as people are making out here. Also, just a little crinkle, McCaffrey carrying an injury. So he's expected to play, but I wonder how much of Eli Mitchell will see, to, to, to your point, and how much that will affect things just in terms of the injury that McCaffrey's got, and how that's affecting his mobility and how Shanahan might be forced to limit the way that he's using him. So... I'm not wholly convinced that this narrative that's flying around, the Eagles can't stop the run, is as accurate as people say. I think they will be reasonably effective in doing that and force Purdy to beat them with his arm. By the way, on injuries, Hurts banged up, of course, missed a few games towards the end of the season, but he looked fine last week. So I don't think his injury is anything for, if you're on the Philly side, to worry about. So speaking of which, let's get down to it then. This is where you and I, disagree crystal tom and it worries me it keeps me awake at night frankly gang that i disagree with crystal's tom so vehemently but i am on the eagles to cover the spread being two and a half stayed there hasn't moved since we last caught up no so the line is still two and a half eagles two and a half point favorites 49 mm. is obviously plus two and a half you're getting 10 to 11 each of two that's the market right now you're very much eagles i'm very much 49ers i think this game should be a pick em. i wouldn't be surprised if the eagles do win uh, but I think the bet has to be the 49ers just with this line. And I've also backed the Mantipos. So I kind of, it's a heart and head decision. Mm -hmm. um, the over under line also, we should touch on that. It's just uh, currently 46 and a half. If you do like the 49ers to win this game, as Propo mentioned on SVK Edge Rush over on the Nat Coombs show, he said, if the 49ers win this game, this is likely to be an under because it's going to develop into a scrap. Mm -hmm. And I completely buy that as well. I think the under looks the wise play out of those two. And also, just to go back on running backs there, you mentioned CMC's got an injury. Mm. I mean, when does CMC not have an injury over the last <laughs> couple of years? Yeah, um, yeah. But if that means he doesn't, you know, play the majority of snaps or the amount of snaps that he would usually play when he's uh, completely healthy, then Elijah Mitchell, as you've touched on, is going to get plenty of the ball. And he's three to one for an anytime touchdown scorer. Last week, he was a big mm. part of the Love that. 49ers plan against Dallas. So three to one on Elijah Mitchell looks a good play. Love that. Love that. Love the fact we disagree on the ultimate winner here, or well, certainly with the, the lines factored in. I'd just like as well, worth pointing out, as we always do this with this kind of line, under three, absolutely the edge for me there. Like the Eagles, you like the 49ers, and it's the same kind of vibe with the Bengals, Chiefs. I mean, there's been so much line movement with this, right? It started off, yeah. what, the Bengals were dogs uh, to start with, then they were favourites, and now they're dogs again? Because it was all about, of course, around Mahomes' injury and reports coming out. He's been a full participant in practice Wednesday and Thursday. We're recording this Friday. So is Mahomes... Did you hear what you said? People will see where I'm at on Sunday. <laughs> it's <laughs> crazy, is, isn't it? It really ominous, is crazy. Ominous for the Bengals when he's just dropping lines like that. <laughs> Yeah, so this line movement is ridiculous. Uh, when we first looked at the market five days ago, the Bengals were two and a half point favorite, uh, two and a half point underdogs. Sorry, then it switched to one and a half point underdogs. Then it became a pick'em, and then the Bengals were one point favorites. Now, over the last day, we've seen videos emerging of Patrick Mahomes practicing, and now the Chiefs are one point favorites, and the Bengals are back to being one point underdogs again. It is ridiculous. And also, have you seen that video on Twitter of Mahomes practicing? Mm. I've got two two points on this. Firstly. I've never seen a guy look less interested in stretching in all my life, which is fair <laughs> enough, given, given how good he is. He's you haven't seen Propo that. play five a side, to be honest. So, I, mean, <laughs> I don't want to either. You um, definitely don't want to. And, and the other thing is, this guy, Patrick Mahomes, now I know he is a superhero on the field, but he suffered a high ankle sprain last week, five days ago. Mm -hmm. 
He's now practicing and he's jump. I've seen him jump off a little wall. Obviously, it wasn't very, it wasn't a massive wall. It was only probably this big. He jumps off perfectly fine. I had a high ankle sprain once when I played five aside, uh, two matches of five aside now. Mm-hmm. I don't think I could walk for about three weeks. It was unbelievable. So <laughs> well, he must you know be part machine now. I, 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 I've, I've often suspected that, that he has been created in some kind of lab uh, and sent back for the future. The What you didn't see when he jumped off uh, that wall was he did the classic, I'm fine, I'm fine, keeping <laughs> it, styling it out face. And then afterwards was just gr- grimacing for <laughs> about 15 or 20 seconds. It, did you see his, his line on Brady? He said he'd been checked to Brady this week. Uh, for advice, which I, lo- I love. I love the fact that mm. Brady's phone goes, I wonder how, how Brady's got him stored in the phone. Is it Pat? Is it Mahomes? Is it Patrick Mahomes? Is it that kid? <laughs> Hid Mahomes. And Mahomes said, well, you know, of course, uh, of course I'm going to get uh, advice from wherever I can get, particularly if it's from the GOAT. I mean, who wouldn't, right? But then he said, it's cool to see the guys you've watched growing up your whole life be able to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> It's like when occasionally I will get somebody coming up because I am a yeah, similar age to Tom Brady. I know those of you watching this on YouTube won't believe it. Won't believe it. I look younger than that, but I am. I am a, the same age as Tom Brady. And we'll, we'll get uh, NFL fans in the UK coming up to me and say, oh, you know, now nah, really like your stuff. Great to see you. And you feel great. You feel just like Brady would have done getting the call from my home is a warm glow. And then they'll drop something like, yeah, I've watched you since I was a kid. <laughs> okay, I didn't need, I didn't need that. But uh, that was great. Brady and Mahomes getting together. What do you think the injury is likely to do then? On the basis that he isn't amazing as he is, he's not superhuman. High ankle sprains as we got into, and I pulled my uh, doctor, Dr. James Sandrini act over on SBK Edge Rush, outlined the complexity of the injury, what it typically does in terms of mobility, obviously, and um, the length it normally takes to recover from. The reality is he's going to be taped up heavily, shot with God knows what, and we'll be fine, but we'll be 70% my hope. So what's going to affect his, obviously, his ability to run, to scramble, to, to keep plays alive, to extend plays, which is a key part of his game. I think he's going to find that harder. I think that's going to result in the Chiefs simplifying the game plan. But then this is an altogether different Chiefs offense anyway, post Tyreek Hill. They've been simplifying the game plan all season long. They've been slicing and dicing, mixing it up with six different, six or seven different receivers. It's going to force Andy Reid to perhaps reflect on that even further. But again, I don't think that's a necessary disadvantage, Tom. When you think about how well Lou Anarumo's played the uh, the Chiefs over the last couple of years. And I wonder whether forcing Reed's hand, great alchemist that he is, to dial up some new trickery might not actually be a blessing in disguise for Kansas City. Yeah, it's really interesting, isn't it? Obviously, they've got a lot of gadget players now. They didn't used to have as many. It used to be Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey, and Mm. that was kind of it. You know, Tyreek would go on this long, you'll go on go routes, post routes, crosses, and they'd try to target him 30, 40 yards down the field. So Patrick Mahomes would need time in the pocket, and then Travis Kelsey would pick up everything else. But now you've got Kadarius Toney, you've got Isaiah Pacheco, you've got Jarek McKinnon, who's the number one gadget player on the offense. You've got Miko Hardman, who's expected to come back. You've got Juju Smith-Schuster. There's so much talent out wide and at running back and a mm. tight end. Noah Gray seems to make a play every week as well, uh, an unknown tight end coming into the fray. So I think Kansas have got plenty of options. It doesn't have to be a deep route every single time, which will help Mahomes because last week when he picked up that injury, obviously very fresh injury at the time against Jacksonville, he couldn't do a drop back. He couldn't even do a three-step drop back. Mm. It was one step, throw the ball. He couldn't even hand it off to the running back on an inside or outside uh, run play. So Lots will will be determined in this game. In the first quarter, we'll see how bad the injury is. Mm. I think it will stop his mobility slightly, uh, although the the practice uh, videos suggest that might not be the case. The main thing with Patrick Mahomes, obviously he's got a phenomenal arm. He can make plays. And this injury doesn't hurt his arm. Obviously, he's still healthy. He can still throw the ball however far you want. But what it does stop is the fact of pushing off off his back leg Mm -hmm. and also... Sometimes that pocket can crumble around him and he squirts out to the right or squirts out to the left and makes these phenomenal sidearm plays. He might not be able to do that here. And against a phenomenal Cincinnati defense, a Mm. really good Cincinnati defense that's improved all season under Lou Anarumo, that could cause him a slight issue. Now, my basis of punting in this game, and I have to say I'm now reserved to have a bet after seeing Mm -hmm. Patrick Mahomes' injury status because 
He looks healthier than I thought he would be. Um, so I might keep the cash in my pocket. But if I was to play, I'd play Cincinnati plus one. And the reason mm -hmm. for that is if they can stop this Casey offense once or twice, I think that could be enough in a game that I believe will turn into a shootout. Mm. This Kansas City defense is not the best. It really isn't. I expect Joe Burrow to pick his way around and, and get touchdown after touchdown. You know, on that, so the Bengals O-line, of course, which has been decimated, but absolutely stood up last time out against Buffalo. Could have Alex Kappa back. They could have Jonah Williams back. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Do you like the over then, based on what you said? Yeah, 100%. I love the over. The line mm. is set to 48. I didn't actually mention this on SBK Edge Rush. I should have done. But the more research I've put into this game, the more confident I am in mm -hmm. the fact that this is going to go over. I envisage the Bengals putting up 28 to 35 points. Yeah. If that's the case, oh, Casey it's going to fly over. Yeah. 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 Casey yeah. needs to put up I, 20. For a I couldn't over. agree more. I love, I love the over too. I, and, and I like the Bengals. You're right. It's a really, really tough one. I think I will take a little bit on the Bengals, but the over is definitely going to be my play here. I like Travis Kelsey as well because, because, because he had 14 catches against the Jags. As you say, he's been a focal point in this all new Kansas City offense, but particularly we've seen it time and time again, banged up quarterback, even a mercurial quarterback like Mahomes, the comfort blanket go-to guy tends to get a little bit more of a look than normal. We've seen it. We see it with rookie quarterbacks and their tight ends. It's as old as the sun. And I think seven and a half is the over under on Kelsey for catches. I love that. I'm going to take a bit of that. What do you think of the smack talk coming from the Chiefs? Willie Gay, Chiefs linebacker, said there's nothing impressive about the Bengals offense, which is <laughs> one of the most remarkable things I think I've ever heard. Really? Willie? Really not, nothing? What are they? Okay. Uh, and then Lejarius Sneed doubled down. He said he's going to, he said the Chiefs corner is going to own Jamar Chase, T. Higgins and Co. Oh my God. I, I interviewed Jerry Sneed at a Super Bowl a few years back. Great talker, as you'd expect out of, uh, I mean, I love corners and, and, and smack talk, but he was yeah. great fun and very eloquent and big energy and had, did everything with a smile on his face. So I reckon he might have been, you've always got to see the context. You've always got to see, you know, the actual look on his face when he's saying, I think there might have been a, a wink and a smile when Legeria said that. But mm, bit of a uh, bit of uh, locker room bulletin board material there for the Bengals. All right, so we like the over, kind of leaning Bengals, divided as far as the Eagles 49ers are concerned. Let's wrap things up with the outright markets. Hmm. So what's that looking like in terms of four team standing? Who's the Super Bowl favorite? I would guess that it is the, I'm going to guess that it is, God, I bet it's really tight, but I reckon it's, is, is it, is it all even? <laughs> is it... It, is, it is. I have to admit the most incredible market at this stage of an NFL season I have ever seen. Now, right. I'm back in the history books. Obviously I'm still quite a young guy, so yeah, I haven't so seen. Do you grow up watching me? Yeah. You're going to drop that. <laughs> you drop that one. I haven't seen too many markets at this stage. I mean, I've probably seen 10, 11, but I've gone back in the history books. And in the last 20 years, this is the closest between four teams at this stage of the NFL season any market has ever had it. Philadelphia wow. Eagles currently mm -hmm. 3.5 favourites. Kansas City Chief, Chiefs 3.75. The Bengals 3.95. And the 49ers 4. There is half a point separating wow. the four teams. And that tells you two things. Mm -hmm. One, there's no standout performer. But also at the same time, it tells you that all four of these teams are exceptionally good. And two, the traders have no idea who's going to win the Super Bowl this year, which I think is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes in, you know, in all sports, this could be football, it could be horse racing, it could be golf, it could be tennis. You have a standalone, a standalone favorite and people go into games and think, God, this is a foregone conclusion, isn't mm -hmm. it? We know who's going to win. We literally have no idea, according to the market, who's going to Love win it. this game. Bo both games they're basically pickums. it's going to be phenomenal i'm really looking forward to it and one more thing i want to ask you let's go and this is based on all four teams and mm -hmm. i just thought of this while i was prepping for the pod so i thought hang you know on what, you I'll... prep for the pod <laughs> this is you, you got to get used to the uh nc show family we'll work on that we'll work on that in the off season <laughs> prepping for the pod we don't do that okay yeah go for it so i'm going to test you for your mm -hmm. uh, impromptu knowledge well not mm -hmm. knowledge you're just your opinion mm -hmm. You're hypothetically being appointed as the new GM of the I London T Boys. I love new it. NFL. What we call them? The London what? London T Boys. T Boys. <laughs> Newest team in the NFL. I, I, well, the first, my first act is to change their name to the London Calling. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good name oh, to be oh, fair. Oh. With the fact that you're now the new GM, yeah, comes the perk of picking one player 
-hmm. in each offensive position, well, the four main positions, from the four teams currently left in the playoffs. You can pick a quarterback, a running back, a wide receiver, and a tight end. From mm -hmm. the 49ers, Eagles, Bengals, and Chiefs. I love this. Who are you taking? I love this. All right. So for the times, we go, you're right. For the times, for the, those out there who don't know, those who listen to my podcast regularly should know because I plug, plug it up. And uh, a separate little piece where we were previewing, a number of different writers were previewing the uh, the Bengals Chiefs game. And that was a question that we were asked who, who do you take? Who do you pick? And I described it in the piece as like having to choose between the West Wing and succession no the west wing of the wire i think i said uh, with um josh allen being the sopranos right and i have to decide <laughs> maybe jalen hurts can be succession so it's almost impossible to say what is better but you kind of depends on the mood you're in they're both great i with my homes because i'm not obviously not taking purdy and jalen great great season it's got to be between my homes and burrow and i love them both and they're both great but i lean burrow i lean burrow i just think he is the kind of guy i want in my offense i love the fact he was absolutely killed for the first couple of years of being in the nfl as well and still was good so i love that fact so yeah i'm going burrow as my quarterback but that's a hell of a call right then i'm allowed a wide receiver hmm Wide receiver. I'll come back to the wide receiver. Tight end. I'm going to go Kittle. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that <clears throat> I love the fact that Kittle was written off so much this season. I think Iron Mike, the great Iron Mike, wrote him off. And if Iron Mike's writing you off, you're in trouble. And yet, all <laughs> every all the critics and he bounced back. So I'd go Kittle there. I, also, I need a bit of old school veteran leadership in my locker room. So I like the fact Kittle been around the block a little bit. He'll keep the youngers in in check. All right, running back. This might surprise you a bit. Oh, okay. Uh, honorable mention to Joe Mixon. Love Joe Mixon as a player, but I'm uh, oh, I'm gonna go McCaffrey. I'm going McCaffrey as my running back, a superstar. What I mean, what a great move. When you think about trades that work, trades that don't, saluting the Denver Broncos and Russell Wilson. This is very much in the former column of you just knew from day one this was gonna work. McCaffrey with Shanahan, of course it was gonna work. So wide receiver. I love Stefan Diggs. I think if you look at the evolution, and this is what makes, I think, Jalen Hurts' evolution all the more impressive because, yeah, of course, he's got, he's had AJ Brown brought in, but Diggs evolving or helping to, uh, to helping Josh Allen to evolve was a critical, critical chapter in that story. I think Hurts has necessarily um, had the same level of support there. So Diggs is terrific. It's definitely not Cole Beasley. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go Jamar Chase. I'm going to go the Burrow Chase connection because they could have got it. But I was thinking, I was thinking T Higgins and I love Juju, but yeah, I'm going to go there. Give me your four quickly. I love it. I mean, I, I wrote down my four just in case. Let's do you it. Pick, you picked three of the four. Joe Did Burrow, yeah. Jamar Chase, George Kittle, taking yeah. all three of those. Yeah, yeah. And I'm taking my man now. I can't ditch him. Isaiah Pacheco. Oh, of being. course you are. Pacheco. I love Pacheco. I love that. I, I know some hipsters out there will be just picking some yeah. <laughs> random left field fours. How many of you out there would take Brock Purdy? Come on. Although, hey. Someone would. You might be laughing last. What are the odds on Purdy Super Bowl MVP? I called that about six weeks ago. I mean, I don't actually have the hand. I wish, I I take, I wish hand, I'd taken but... it. I wish I'd taken it. It was six weeks ago. It was crazy. Odd. Wow. That, I mean, it could, it could, could conceivably happen. Quarterbacks always get the edge there. Brilliant stuff. Crystal, Tom Collins, as ever. One last bit of business before we get out of Dodge. Bet £10 over on SBK. Get £10 in free bets. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. You know the drill by now. Championship weekend. Let's bring it. I can't wait. Check in with you next week. Look after yourself. Let's get it.